Well, but thank you so much for um, taking your time out of your day to join me today. Um, it's an honor to really have you um, on Candid Conversations, and I'm so excited to engage with you today. So thank you so much for accepting my invitation. I always accept your like, invitations, people <laughs> that I like, that I resonate with what they're doing. It just, it's just really amazing what you guys have done so far. Yeah, and speaking of resonating, I remember the first time um, I heard you speak at a BWA event. I think it was 2018. I was in first year at WITS. Um, and it was the Women in Leadership event or series um, at, oh, at, at the Bank. auditorium. Yes. And I remember you speaking. And I, for a minute, I just sat in awe of this human being who is so eloquent, so <laughs> elegant, and so passionate about seeing women develop um, and prosper. And it really helped me form a, a sense of, you know, the woman that I want to become one day. So um, that's why I knew that sitting down with you and having you on this conversation is going to be an, an amazing experience. So I think to start off the interview, um, I'd just like to know behind the industry disruptor and this amazing businesswoman that you are, um, what is it in your childhood that groomed you to, you know, the place that you're in now and what events sort of shaped you into the woman that you've become? you know I think about this a lot like I think a lot about okay why how did I end up here and what is it in my childhood that shaped you know who I become and really I think I so my parents were never married and so I was raised by my grandmother because my mom got pregnant when she was very young and she was still in school um, she was in varsity and I think just that being surrounded by women like I'm not from a family even without my father there are just not a lot of men in my family so literally everybody from my grand my mom my aunts I think maybe I've got two uncles or one but they're also not that present and so for me mm. it was really about just seeing how women are educated women are intentional and I've never had a sort of a, a, a a limitation as to who I can become or who I can be because all my grandparents, great grandparents were all really educated. They were teachers, they were, you know, lawyers, whatever. And so for me, I think just being around that, just from a young age, being around people who take education and self-development and self-empowerment so seriously and who encourage you, not necessarily by what they say, but even just whatever it is that you want to do, um, my mom, whatever it is that I've ever wanted to do, my mom has never said, my parents have never said no. So if I go and say, I want to be a photographer, my mother will go and find me a place where I can go and learn and she will support me as best as she knows how and, and all of that. Um, and so for me, I think it's just firstly, being surrounded by women who are not reliant or dependent on men or anyone else to yeah. make things happen for them. And, and just that being the, the norm for me. And just secondly, just never being limited, never being limited and constantly just being supported no matter what. I think has, has, has really shaped me to be the person that I am today. I mean, I still struggle with a lot of things, but I think it, those are possibly the biggest contributing factors. Mm -hmm. And was a path of entrepreneurship and I guess advocacy for women and the many things you do, something that you were intentional about and you knew that you always wanted to do it, or was it a gradual process of growing into it and finding your feet in that space? Uh... I always knew that I would be in leadership. Mm. So I remember when so I went to an all-girls high school and an all-girls boarding school. So you know how they, they groom you to... The world is your oyster. You can be... World domination. Person. 100%. <laughs> and time I thought I should be the president. Oh, wow. Then, I, for a long time, I wanted to be the president. Like, it's funny because all my passwords were president, what, 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 what. Mm. Anyway. Um, and so I always knew that I would be in leadership. And I always knew that there was a business component to me somehow. 
and in high school there was a time I had like a little a bag brand I was selling bags and purses and all kinds of things and uh, I had like small little entrepreneurial ventures but I didn't take them as seriously yeah and so only when I got to this and when I started being a lot more intentional about leadership and um you know, learning what does it mean to lead people and being mentored properly by um, my, my mentor, who was my aunt. Um, at the time, she was the head of strategy at Treasury. And she started a program called Leading Voices of Tomorrow. And she made me an ambassador for that program. Mm. And we were going out into like these semi-rural areas and we were talking to young women about themselves about empowerment about studying further about you know just encouraging and empowering them giving our bursaries and and whatever help it was about entrepreneurship as well start something how do you give back to your community how do you identify what the challenges in your community are and how do you try to solve them as young as you are who do you go to for help yeah and so i think it was that combination for me of okay i really really love women and encouraging and empowering women and anything that has to do with women in business entrepreneurship and and that Mm. and then how did i get into business (laughs) i think and then somehow along the lines i was studying marketing and i had a tutoring company and yeah okay wait let's go into marketing and then that's just been how we've been growing ever since Mm, that that's amazing and tell us more something about Francis so we um, initially Mahana Mollison Solutions was supposed to be the marketing company but as we've mm. grown over the years there was a need for 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 me to separate uh some of the other business ventures that I that I have from yeah. the digital marketing agency and so something about Francis is a digital marketing agency and then Mahana Mollison Solutions like a holding company for all the other business um, ventures that we have I and mean, go, we're going into property very soon we're going into um lifestyle and sort of this cosmetic hair care all of yeah. that industry and stuff so I needed a holding company that you know would own all the different entities and brands um but something about Francis is a really fun quirky digital marketing agency we've done a lot of interesting work over the past uh, five years we actually turned five on the 23rd of November congratulations um, <laughs> thank you <laughs> five years in business wow um so something about Francis is really fun. I mean, we work on a lot of really interesting things. We push the boundaries of conversation as much as possible and of content. And we want to be different. We are different mm. in this approach. Um, and we do a lot of work with small businesses because that's one of the biggest impact. Yes. So we don't only want to work with your corporates and your brands and whatever, but it's also about how do we help small businesses who, to actually find their customers online mm. at the end of the day i think that's very important because the more, the more small businesses succeed the more we can be part of the growth stories of, of some of our partners and some of our clients yeah yeah that that's that's amazing i want to backtrack from your business endeavors to your own personal development because something you spoke about um earlier on in our interview i think when it comes to leadership the best or the most important form of leadership is leadership of ourselves because if we ourselves are whole and healthy and happy then we can lead organizations in the best way possible so how important for you has it been to constantly develop yourself to constantly work on your own self-doubts and you know the things that we face as individuals so that when you go out into the business world you you know can represent your organizations in the best way possible this is a difficult one because i think you know that leadership is for me leadership is maybe 70 percent of leadership at least where i where i am now is about leading self Mm. and it's about how i show up and it's about how i contribute to other people and it's about how I lead and guide other people because before I can lead any organization or any person I need to understand where I'm going and where am I taking all these people that I'm leading you know so it's incredibly important and and every day 
you know, I still struggle with things like imposter syndrome and fear and self doubt. It's real, yeah. I mean, it's like, and the other day I was asking, like, do men ask themselves these things that I'm asking myself? <laughs> and even if you just look at the statistics, we know that women run businesses perform better than men run male run businesses. We know that even CEOs who are running these um, large corporates perform better than men male CEOs who are doing the same running businesses in the same industries and fields. So it's like we're actually doing it. People can yeah. do this. Women can actually do this. Why are we so scared? What what is it that holds us back? And I struggle a lot with, I thought it was not fear, but recently I think it's, I've figured out that it's fear of actually succeeding. I think I don't have a fear of failure. I think I've failed enough times to not be afraid of failure, but I'm afraid of success. Yeah. Which is weird because it's like, don't you want to succeed? Exactly. How do I do? <laughs> what happens afterwards? Mm. Like, okay, now you've got all the things that you wanted, now what? You know? mm. And it's, a, it's, it's an almost irrational fear, but, and, and the imposter syndrome as well around, it's only been five years, I've only been doing this for five years. Do I qualify to even sit in the room as somebody who's been yeah. here for longer? Why should anybody listen to me? I tried this and it failed. Why should anybody listen to me? Mm. Um, and even when it comes to leading people and hiring people, it's so difficult to get people to even if you're paying them it's so difficult to get people to buy into your vision for your organization and i think this is one of the times that i'm really grateful for the my experience with the bwa and and working with mentors and and, and different people because you then realize that it's it's all about how do you communicate with people how do you make them feel part of your vision and how do you bring people along for for a journey that involves them but that is yours but that is theirs as well and making them understand their role and their importance and making people feel valued and all of yeah. those things so i leadership is, is, is a tough one but mm. i mean every day you try harder you know every day you try something different you learn something new about yourself um and you just you just deal with it as it comes mm. and I'm, i think I'm, at the back of my mind i'm constantly aware of the fact that okay i belong in the room yeah i deserve this i worked hard for this i'm not going to be afraid i'm going to do this mm, mm. i think that's incredibly powerful and i can relate so much even in um, building candid conversations in itself because i have no mm. background in media or writing whatever it is mm. and you know you mm. get those thoughts that are like but like will anyone take my writing seriously or will anyone take these <laughs> videos seriously um but i definitely agree with you when you say you have to affirm yourself in your mind to say you belong in the room and mm -hmm. you matter and your voice matters and that should be you know mm -hmm. your driving mm -hmm. force in everything that you mm -hmm. do um i just wanted to ask you how does it feel for you to have built you know organizations especially the organization like um the bwa vid student chapter that has affected or impacted the lives of young women who even came to vids after you graduate so or, you know after you spent your time there because i personally am a beneficiary of the amazing organization and so many other young women are as well how does it feel mm -hmm. for you to mm -hmm. see um the fact that you know your service has really touched people's lives i mean it feels it feels great i i i don't know <laughs> i don't know so it, it it feels amazing to to be part of this this community of, of women who are so intentional about wanting to change their lives through something and saying that okay i want to join this organization and and, and knowing that i'm the reason why all of that started mm. but at the same time i feel like i could have done more you know i feel like they should have been more we should have done so much more and you know we should have been supported so much better and we mm. should have there should have been so much more that we could have done so much more you know but i think that you know at the end of the day you know i did the best that i could and and, yeah. and you're like a testament of that to show that even though i was no longer there you went on to be part of the organization and to learn what you learned and experience what you experienced and now 
you're like writing, you're starting all these different um, organizations and all of that. So for me, that's like, okay, it was actually successful. I mean, yeah. I look at you, I look at me, I look at um, and I'm like, okay, so we actually really did something. And there's a lot of other people. I mean, Tepang from UCT, Michaela from um, NMMU, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we actually did that. Yeah. So it's like, it, it, it's bittersweet because I'm very proud of, of the work that we were able to do and everything that we were able to accomplish. But also I feel like we should have been able to do so much more. Mm, mm, mm. But I think, you know, the work that you guys have put in is a testament to the fact that when people have a vision and they are determined to make it happen, it'll happen, you know, and I do believe that the more things you do, you're going to touch so many other lives. Um, so you should really, really be proud of yourself and, so. <laughs> and, and commend yourself for that. <laughs> Um, of course, no success comes without failures or setbacks. Mm. What have been mm. some sort of failures for you that were defining moments that built your character and, you know, propelled you forward in your career? Mm. Lots. I think I go through those every week. I think I have a, de- <laughs> a defining moment. <laughs> every week. <laughs> hey, it's hard. Um, I think for me, the one that I wrote that really, really sticks out to me and, and why I'll keep coming back to leadership and, and leading yourself before you can try to lead other people. I remember when we when I had started my tutoring company, um, and when I didn't know exactly what Nakano Mollison Solutions was going to be, mm. and it was first tutoring company, um, I was tutoring like three other people. And then I got somebody else to tutor two other people. So it was like, okay, we've got like a few people that were tutoring, okay. Then I went and I hired like four people um, to be tutors and I interviewed them and whatever. And then I don't know what happened. Then out of the blue, they all just resigned. Oh my was, gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, for me, I think I was like 21 at the time. Mm. I was very confused. And that was my first sort of lesson in people and in dealing with situations that involve people in your organization and things like that. And I mean, there've been other, I think my first, um, there was my first proposal that I sent to a corporate that was rejected. And I think for me, I, at that that time, I wanted to like quit, like, okay, this is clearly not for me, but you realize that these things happen every week. You send out 13, you get one positive response. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. And I think those are the two for me that really, really, I had to dig myself out of a very dark place um, because I, I am I'm a very perfectionistic. I like things to work. I don't want to fail. I want to have all the answers. I yeah. Like I, you can, I can take the criticism a little bit, but it can't be too much. Like right. I need to do things right. Mm. You know what I mean? So for me, those two way it's like my first experience at rejection and my first experience that people actually not believing in what I'm trying to do. Those I think were the two defining moments for me because I at that point decided that okay, I'm actually going to stop. Maybe this is not meant to be. Maybe whatever. But then, I mean, in hindsight, I realized that. It was very good that those things happened because now I know how to deal with rejection. Yeah. Deal with people saying no and deal with people who don't necessarily understand what you are trying to do and how they fit into that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's incredibly powerful. And the reason why I ask a lot of the people that I interview questions like their failures and setbacks is because a lot of people out there think that the minute they start a business and they get a no, or the minute something doesn't succeed, they must quit. You know, and it's mm. a, it's at the point where you face resistance, where you learn and you you become more persistent. Mm. And so I think sharing mm. your experiences is gonna set a lot of people free, and it's gonna give people confidence, yeah. you know, to go after opportunities, yeah. even if they get um, a no. Um, You spoke about Mm -hmm. mentors a while back in our interview, Mm -hmm. and I just wanted to get an idea of what are, or who rather, are some of the people that you look up to, whether it be family or, you know, people in corporates who have inspired your own personal journey? Hmm. I think people that I look up to, um, there's quite a few. I mean, I'm 
really, really inspired by um, Mbumi Madisa, who is now the group CEO of Budvest, the youngest. Uh, uh, for a while, she was the only woman and, and, and all of that. Mm. Um, because, not only because of her journey and her story and where she comes from, but also because she is very intentional about supporting and helping other women. So when we started the BWA, uh, the student chapter, she was our very first guest speaker. That's amazing. And she like showed up, was there, sponsored the venue, sponsored everything. You know, how do yeah. you want me to show up? What do you want me to say? Okay, you want me to talk about this? You know, so for me, it's just that knowing, that understanding of we can all achieve whatever it is that we want to achieve. And there are people who are looking for ways to help and inspire and to motivate and mentor us as young women. Um, uh, but also in business, I think Ipileng Mkari is a big motivation, inspiration for me mm. because there aren't a lot of stories of entrepreneurs who at that age, in their age, who didn't find a job after school, who went to school, graduated and went straight into business. And so her story where, you know, she's been running her company, I think it's been 30 years now, 20, 22 years, sorry. Mm. Um, and she had, she has a listed company on the JSE that, you know, from her own hands. And, and I find that to be incredibly inspirational yeah. um, because it's a testament to say that we don't really need to work for someone else to achieve the business dream that you have. True. Um, and she just did it. She was one of the very few women, first women to list the company on the JSE. And I mean, like, what? She's like a black, a black <laughs> Incredible. Woman. Incredible. Um, so I think those are the two, two distinct women that I look up to. Mm-hmm. Um, and finally, what do you want Itumele Mahatso to be remembered for? Impact. Um, impact. Uh, I I want to be remembered for the lives of people that I changed, for for people who can say that because of something that I did, they mm. were able to do or get something. Yeah. I, whether it's in a marketing business where because of something that I presented, some strategy, some campaign, some something, now my business is doing so much better. Or if it's through a podcast or even through the BWA, whatever other programs that I start through the Formidable Women Network, I just want to be remembered for really, really impact-driven work that changes people's lives. That's amazing. I certainly remember you for that, and I hope the audience will remember you for that as well. Itu, thank you so much for joining me. It was a pleasure talking to you today. I I am incredibly inspired, um, and I'm honored to have had you on this (laughs) I'm inspired by you as well. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. How can people get in touch with you or something about Francis if they want to interact with your organizations? How can people reach you? Okay. So you can find me on Instagram, Twitter. Oh, I'm going to read more Instagram, really. <laughs> Twitter is a bit of a for me. Uh, something about Francis is also on Instagram and Twitter. Just add something about Francis or who is Francis. Or you can just send me an email. ITU at whoisfrancis.co.za. Awesome. We'll leave those details as well um, in the description box after this video. All right. Thank you, Idu. Um, I hope to have a candid Thanks, conversation with you. you again in maybe the next three Definitely. years. Probably you'll be the president <laughs> of something else as well or by something. that time. <laughs> I have no doubts about that. <laughs>